I'm Mally Moore. I am Dustin Ghost to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. And what a bleak ending we have for you this week. Shit. Uh, based on the title, you can already tell, this week's episode is The Butterfly Effect from the 2004. The Director's Cut. Oh yeah, we should mention... The Director's Cut. Up front, we are doing The Director's Cut. Uh, this movie had a handful of alternative endings. but yeah, it had like five. We went with the bleakest. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the most ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mally, what is your relationship like with this movie? When was the first time you saw this movie? Uh, in theaters. Really? Yeah, dude, I used you to You gave see money to this every- movie? Yes, fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. What was that like? Uh, Didn't enjoy it? Mm. Now, the theatrical ending is the one where he's like, uh... They... He's on Wall Street or something? Yeah, like, he goes, like, so the way the theatrical ends is he goes back in time to when they first meet and pretty much tells... Tells her to fuck off, right? Tells her to fuck off. And then she grows up happy. He grows up happy. Um, Well, we don't actually see that. But he... So he he travels back to the future and... Back to the future? (laughs) Dun-dun-dun! Grandfather Paradox. Um, And, like, everything's okay. Like, he doesn't even know... Like, he remembers Kaylee, but no one... None of his friends do, because the first thing he says is... Where's Kaylee? And the dude's like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. And he goes, burns all of his notebooks and stuff, and then flash forward eight years later, he's all Rico Suave walking down. That's right, because they're playing playing Oasis while he's burning the notebooks. (laughs) And she walks by him, and they kind of share this like, she looks familiar. Will they, won't they kind of look? And then that's it. Yeah. Boring. Not nearly as rock and roll as the ending we fucking watch. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so yeah, again, if this is your first time listening to our show, we take movies such as the director's cut of Butterfly Effect and an ending that doesn't necessarily leave you feeling too great. We try and find something positive to say about it at the end. Um, like I said this week, again, is Butterfly Effect. Director is Eric Bress and J.K. Mackie Gruber, I think. This thing took two people two people to direct this thing this had two directors this had two directors i was surprised it even had one and who who stars in this movie mally um so we got the lead ashton kutcher of course in his heyday in his prime killing it in the game fresh Um, this is fresh off of that 70s show right i don't know probably oh no it was fresh off something was this one punked was a thing no it was still going on because topher grace took off one of the seasons of that Sunday show to do Spider-Man 3, and this definitely came out before Spider-Man 3, right? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it did. Anyway. All right, so we got Ashton Kutcher, Amy Smart, mm. Eldon Henson, who I always forget is in this movie, and he's awesome. Yep. Um, that would be... Foggy? Foggy. In From Daredevil. Foggy Nelson and Daredevil. Um, William Lee Scott, who is kind of good in this movie. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, Logan Lerman, like young as shit. Little y- Logan Lerman. Eric Stoltz, and I can never remember the other gentleman's name. He plays um, Ethan Supley. That's who I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Um, this movie actually did fairly well too at the box office. Had a budget of only thirteen million dollars, and worldwide had a gross of ninety six million. Uh, On a budget of what was it? Thirteen million. Oh, wow. This movie wow. doesn't have too much going on in terms of uh, like grand setups, I guess. I guess most of that budget went to like the time traveling what, aspects of it. the sweet visual effects that looked like they were done in Final Cut? Mm-hmm. 100%. And this movie has uh, 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean... Pretty well deserved, I think. Yeah. Uh, t- if you've never seen this movie, I don't think this is necessarily an episode you have to watch before we review it. Um, But just listen to this trailer and you'll get a full understanding of what we're dealing with here. Keep in mind, this is 2004. My first note. (laughs) Actually, Mally, my first note. uh, When was the last time you heard Stained in a movie trailer? (laughs) Dude. (laughs) When was the last time I heard Stained at all? Good point. Karaoke two weeks ago. That's beside the point. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Um, it wasn't me. <laughs> when was the last time you heard Stain in a movie trailer? Though? Is this I the don't only, know. Is this the only exception to the I, rule? I don't know. I have to say, this trailer is so bad, first of all, but... Uh, it's fucking awful. I gotta say, I am so glad we got past this phase of having voiceovers in trailers. Oh my god, right? So terrible, especially Why when they're a thing? especially when they're just reading what's on the screen. That's even worse. Um, but this trailer, it doesn't. It screams late nineties oh more god. than it screams. Can, can we get like a trailer voice for this show? For our show yeah. to like talk about things as we're going along. In like, a world where happy endings are stupid. <laughs> Season two. Look out. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, this movie, this trailer screams. You're laughing like that's not going to be a thing. That's going to be a thing. It screams late 90s grunge more than it does early, t- like mid 2000s. Yeah, when you said 2004, I was like, bullshit, this movie came out in like 97. It no, feels 2004. Like 97. This movie is so past its prime, like past its due date, it's it's expired. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about though before we get into the butterfly effect? Director's, director's cut. cut in a world <laughs> uh, where there's theatrical and director's versions. My first note we take is on the director's cut. My first note is remember when New Line Cinema was a thing? Dude, right? <laughs> Every time the I moment see... that logo popped up, I was like, holy shit. Not only that. Back. Every time I see that logo, I instantly am hoping somebody just starts screaming Mortal Kombat. <laughs> see, when I see it, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. TMNT2. I was going to say that news, or let's that. Let's do this. Either, one of those two, for sure. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, I had a lot of I notes. wouldn't... If, dude, if I... Okay. If I put in Butterfly Effect, mm-hmm. saw that New Line logo, and all of a sudden Mortal Kombat started playing, when, I wouldn't even be no, pissed. Better movie. I, I would have called you like, hey, so man. We're doing we, Mortal Kombat. We're doing Mortal Kombat this week because something happened and I didn't change Well, that it. one doesn't necessarily end on a great note either. If you think about it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Season two, look out. <laughs> we're um, doing back to back. We're doing Mortal Kombat and <laughs> Annihilation. Let's go. Uh, so I have a lot of notes up front, which is usually a bad sign. I was reading these. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Uh, you have pages. What are my first notes? Of notes. That's not even written down here. And I scrolled here. past and like <laughs> three pages in, all I saw was the word dick at one point. So let's just, <laughs> I saw dick and stillbirth. Let's get into this. One of my first notes that's not even written down here really is everybody in this movie is crazy. Like Everyone in this movie like are bad people. I took note of Except every time. Except for Ethan's, Ethan, or Eldon, Lenny. Lenny. Lenny is... No, Lenny goes crazy, too. He's not a bad person, but he, he's when crazy. When does Lenny go crazy? Lenny goes crazy through most of the timeline. <laughs> I started he's making... the only one around, but he's the only one who's like, this is fucking stupid. Yeah, he is the he is the voice of reason, the audience's voice throughout this he, whole movie. Dude, shout out to Ellen Henson. Give that kid an award. But... He always plays like the awesome voice of reason, dude. Well... I started making notes of like every time someone turns crazy in this movie, and it's it's every single character. That's a drinking <laughs> game right there. Um, so yeah, let, before we get to that, I get off to say this movie feels like two college dorm mates wrote it while they were fueled on coke and having fever dreams. Because this like this movie is trying to be like a Fight Club or like a Seven. In fact, Seven is in this movie. Because yeah, oh shit, you're right. I feel like they're trying so hard to be cool and edgy. Yo, 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 yo. The Butterfly Effect, mm-hmm. directed by David Fincher. A better movie. I would watch the fuck out of better that. Movie. It would probably be amazing. Probably be great. But I got to say also, this goes back to my point in in this this whole Coke Field Fever Dream Theory is the first thing we see on screen, which is a quote about chaos theory. Because nothing screams badass movie like a quote about, like, I put that in quotes, by the way, badass movie. Then a quote about chaos theory right so up front. So what you're telling me is the time travel script I've been working on for three months. I should definitely take that quote about chaos theory from the Absolutely. beginning. Absolutely cool. And you should also not put butterflies in your title sequence about a movie called Butterfly Effect. <laughs> I just put really like that was my yeah. note. <laughs> so we haven't even gotten into the movie yet. Is there anything else like on a grand scheme you want to talk about this movie before we get into a beat by beat? Because we this t- this. Story's timeline is all over the place. I'm going to get fucking comfy because this is going to take some fucking time. Uh, so we start off the movie. Uh, I don't know, dude. Like Evan's running through this doctor's office, this like psychiatric ward, I guess. And like his, you know, blue 
hospital robe, whatever you want to call it. Bullet points. He's fucked up and he draws fucked up shit. There you go. Well, no, though, I'm talking about the very, very, very first thing we see, which is like present day. And he, oh, yeah. he runs to this doctor's office, highs and starts making a, a note. It, whatever. We'll come back oh, to this at the fuck. end. Oh, fuck. That is how the movie... I, I just watched this like yesterday. We'll, I we'll, really obviously, this. we'll come back to this at the end. This but, time travel shit, man. It'll just fucking... <laughs> but we do start... We, head up. we already jump back. We're only like two minutes in the movie. We already jump back 13 years earlier. Yep. Uh, and yeah, bullet points. Turns out Evan is that stereotypical creepy kid who draws fucked up shit and doesn't remember doing it. Yeah. That we... Is a tr- was a super big trend. He's good at it though. In early, yeah, he's a great drawer. Early two thousands to like the the past recent years, we've kind of fallen off of this. But yeah, creepy kids drawing shit that's creepy and they don't remember doing it was a huge staple of horror and thriller movies. I think, especially like Ring is a good example too. The Ring did that too. I'm sure The Grudge yeah. had it at some point. Um, so yeah, that was my own to note. He's a great artist. Uh, Evan and his mom. Goes to this doctor, and this doctor wants to uh, Evan to start keeping journals because he blacks out regularly, so he'll be able to like piece together what happened when he blacked out. Yeah. Um, at one point, Evan's got a knife. Is randomly. He supposed to write in the journals while he's blacked out? I get. I'm. So, I don't understand this at it's all. It's so convenient. the uh, The blackouts are so convenient because it's always during very pivotal moments. Um, and hey, those come into play later, right? However, so- but like. He's supposed to apparently keep notes before. Th- like, my whole thing is, is he supposed to carry around this journal and take notes as things are happening? Like, I'm eating a burger. I'm going to get a refill. And then I black out. Like, how do you... Like, he can only do this retroactively, right? Or, yeah. Or even before before events. Like, I'm going to the doctor. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand the whole thing with the doctors making him keep a journal. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole I lot mean, of sense. I mean, I... A better... It was the writer's way of, like, we gotta get the fucking journals in there somehow. A better, like, way to do this would be today, obviously, like, just to strap a GoPro to your head. Like, (laughs) that's... Journals don't need to be... Don't need to happen. Fincher, get on this remake! (laughs) Um, But yeah, Evan tends to, like, have these moments of crazy, weird blackouts where apparently he's got a knife randomly. Uh, Sure, of course. Okay. Uh... Evan's writing in his notebook that he's going to go spend the day with his friends Kaylee and Tommy. And apparently Kaylee and Tommy's dad is super pedo. Uh, Yo, shout out to Eric Stoltz, though. He's trying. He's trying. He certainly plays a good creepy guy, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Evan drops... uh, Evan's mom drops Evan off at Kaylee and Tommy's place. Then he immediately go into the basement (laughs) where Evan apparently has blacked out and wakes up naked in front of a camera and next to Kaylee, who's also naked. Jesus. And the dad's like, yeah, you're playing uh, Robin Hood, and you got a kiss. And yeah, that's where we start. This is like 10 minutes into the movie. We're already neck deep in pedophilia. Yeah. Dude, the early 2000s were crazy, man. So Evan's uh, mom takes him to visit his dad because he keeps wanting to meet his dad. Uh, and it, <laughs> he stays in Sunnyvale Psychiatric Institution, which I thought was funny because I was like, yeah, I like the trailer park, Sunnyvale. Right. Um, trailer park boys. No one. Okay. Uh, turns out Evan crickets or turns out Evan's dad is crazy. He's um, not crazy. He's f- a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Uh, Evan is in the middle of talking to his dad. It's, it, I got a genuine laugh out of this one. Evan's he talking. Genuine laughs about everything. Well, like he's in this like this pat this this locked off room like you would do like a you know a meet and greet. At a prison, and yeah, his course. dad's on the other side of the table, and they're just talking. And Evan's like, "Yeah, my mom told me so much about you, about when you were younger." All of a sudden, he's being choked out, like as he blacks out and wakes, and uh, just reawakens, being choked out by his dad. His dad's like, uh, "You gotta, you gotta die. It's the only way things will work out." And then Evan's dad gets killed. Womp womp. Uh, and we ch- we cut to six years later. This movie moves pretty fast. I will gotta say, the pacing is is pretty good. Uh, it well, tends yeah, to lag. Have so much shit to get into it. Jesus. I was gonna say it, it, it tends to lag a little bit at some points, but this movie does. It, like towards the middle of it, the movie tries. It has so much going on that like it. It feels like it's still pretty well paced. You actually want to do me a favor? Can you look up the runtime of this movie? Cause it's got to be two hours, right? Because uh, a yeah, lot a happens second, in this actually. movie. Well, while you're looking that up, we cut to six years later. Uh, Evan and <clears throat> I was just looking. I was actually I was. <clears throat> reading i was 
watching a comparison between the directors and theatrical and actually gave me the run times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Theatrical edition, um, about 109 minutes. So just just past that 90-minute mark. Yeah. um, Director's cut, 115 minutes. It's almost two hours. Yeah. That's crazy. This movie feels a lot longer than that now that I think about all the shit that happens. Yeah. That's insane. Um, But we cut to six years later. Tommy and Evan. Also, okay. One thing I will say, this director's cut, to its credit, does fix some of the plot holes. Some of the plot holes in the theatrical. Oh, we forgot that to mention a lot of people talk shit on. We got forgot to mention Kaylee has a brother, Tommy, who is crazy. Um, a dude, I'm telling. We're gonna you get though, into it. We're gonna get into it. Six years later, fucking William Lee Scott, fucking <laughs> killing it. Evan, Tommy, Lenny, and Kaylee, all the whole gang are smoking cigarettes and reading Hustler at Tommy's house. Edgy. Um. Edgy up fuck. T- Tommy's like, let's blow some shit up. And he pulls out this huge firecracker, which turns out to actually be like a third of a stick of dynamite. Um, and then they decide they're going to walk through the woods and go to this blow some shit up. But I guess feel this movie starts to feel at this point to me like stand by me, but way shittier. Because it's a group of kids walking through the woods. Yeah, to do some get into some mischievous shit. That's what it feels like. And like I said, it's shittier for sure. Um, well, Evan blacks okay. out and he wakes up as a running in the woods away from something. Um, Tommy blames Lenny for whatever happened. Evan cries like a bitch. Uh, and, and apparently somebody got hurt really bad. We don't really know what happened, yeah. but uh, Evan is going in his attic, writing in his journal. And he finds his dad's box uh that has his grandfather's death certificate now, in this, it. This this is director's cut only. Okay. So this, yeah, this scene right here. This is after the Evans blackout with whatever happened with the firecracker. He goes up to his attic and he's writing in his journals. Uh and he finds a box with his dad's name on it and inside there's a bunch of photos of just random stuff. Uh and then his grandfather's death certificate. And it turns out his grandfather was crazy. Because because yeah, of course he was. <laughs> The doctors decide they're going to try and use hypnosis on Evan to try and reenact what exactly happened with the firecracker slash dynamite situation, but he starts having a violent nosebleed and doesn't it doesn't doesn't work out. So so far in this movie, every time he's blacked out, we don't know what happened uh, during his no. blackout. Uh, Tommy, so Lenny gets basically carted out like. I guess whatever happened, they blame Lenny for it, and so Lenny's just gone out of the situation. Uh, and then the three remaining kids decide they're going to go see the movie Seven. Tommy's yeah. a dick, uh, ruins a movie, drops an F-bomb, not and not fuck either, at uh, some guy. Uh, Kaylee's like, you know what? This is some fucked up shit. Somebody obviously got hurt, and now we're going to go see the movie Seven. Uh, you know, I'm not feeling it. Not only that, we're also underage. So she walks out, Evan follows her. Uh... They have a kiss. Uh, turns out not only are Kaylee and Tommy's dad a pedo, but he's also abusive because she's got marks all over. Uh, and then in response to Evan and Kaylee's kiss, Tommy beats up some kid that trips him for some reason. T- takes his anger out on some other guy. with Pretty violently, too, with like one of those like velvet yeah. rope poles. Uh, which beats kid, the fuck out of it. And this kid is so small compared to all the other people in this movie. Like, it just... It's, like. Evan's at least a good six to eight inches taller than him, and he like jacks Evan up against a wall at one point. I'm like, dude, you were letting this little kid beat you up. Dude, it's all about confidence. Apparently, man, the short people have higher tempers, and I should know. Uh, but yeah, it turns out Tommy is crazy because I'm short. Oh, yeah, it turns out you, Tommy is crazy. Oh, shit, you kind of are. Yeah, I'm pretty short. We're uh, always sitting. I don't know. Kaylee and Evan visit Lenny at his house, and uh, Lenny starts deciding he's going to start building a shit ton of model planes now because he's no, crazy. That's what, yeah, that's what crazy people do. Yeah. So they sneak him out, and they're like, you know, we're just going to go take a walk through the woods, and they come across uh, some smoke. Uh, and wait, at- wait. Can I just give the give the listeners a little bit of fun fact? Sure. BTS trivia here. Okay. This is not, wait, this scene is not fun. So uh, what's the trivia? No, no. Like? <laughs> it, it, it's in regards to your notes. Mm-hmm. Fun fact: Every time Dustin types the word "crazy" <laughs> in these notes, it is capital C, lowercase R, capital A, lowercase Z, capital Y. Yep. 
Because they're all crazy. Every fucking time. And you, like <laughs> the word crazy is in here like every other line. <laughs> and you put so much work into this. I just I felt like I needed to point that out. I do. a lot. I try to do as much research as I can. <laughs> And as, as much analysis as possible. Anyway, just want, want to give a little tidbit about how we're we back in. Here. All right. So they go through a walk through the woods and they see some smoke in the distance and they show up. Uh, Tommy is putting Evan's dog, which I didn't even know he had a dog up until this point. Did you? Okay. He's putting his his dog into a also, sack. Also, fuck this scene. Yeah, this scene's pretty you fucked know up. I don't, you know I got a thing with fucking dogs and... Fucking God! It's like well, this Valentine scene gets redeemed. All over again. This, this scene gets redeemed later, kind of. Uh, yeah, Evans putting his dog. Uh, uh, Tommy's putting Evans' dog into a Fuck sack. Fuck Kaylee! Save the fucking dog. And pouring lighter fluid all over it. Uh, Evan moves and uh, to like, cause like he's running at at uh, Tommy because he, he realizes he's putting his dog in a sack, and he tries to to move in on Tommy and. Evan kind of moves out of the way and <laughs> Tommy knocks Kaylee out with a two by four. Uh, Evan blacks out because of course he does. Uh, and it turns out Tommy burned Evan's dog alive as Lenny just kind of sat there being fat and watching. Uh, so Evan is moving away. He's like, fuck this. Evan's mom's like, we gotta get you GTFO. Uh, they hop in the moving truck. And he promises Kaylee and he'll come then back for her. And the rest of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air plays out. Mm-hmm. He, moves, he says he's going to come back for her on this notebook. He holds it up in the window. It's cute. Uh, we cut to seven years later, and Evan's now Ashton Kutcher. That was cool. Cool evolution there. And, and he's in college, and what does he major in? Of course he's a psych major. A fucking course. What else would he be? Not only that, he's a great student, apparently. This kid is like the next second coming of whatever is the Neil deGrasse Tyson equivalent of psychology. Uh, what? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, what the fuck was this? Well, while you're thinking what about that... What were their names? The two fucking dumb, famous psychologists. Dr. Phil? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, it turns out Evan's roommate in college is none other than goth Ethan Suple. <laughs> um, yeah. Going by the name Thumper, because of course he is. Uh, apparently, it's been seven years since Evans had a blackout, and he's going out uh, to celebrate. Uh, they go to a bar. Some shenanigans occur. It's not really relevant to the plot. Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Evan brings a girl home and reads his journals to her. <laughs> That's a hot date idea. I mean... <laughs> not only that, this girl is super invasive and rude. Because, like, she's looking around. She's like, oh, it smells like sex in here. Do you have some incense? And then she just starts going through all his shit. What incense smell like? Well, the, she pulls a box out from under his bed and just starts going through it. He doesn't even know this girl. And I'd be like, excuse me. First of all, get the fuck out. Second of all, Bitch, you think it's a game? And, yeah, she's like, read me some of your journals. <laughs> Girl's a freak. Uh... T Evan time travels though. This is kind of the crux of how this movie works. Evan times travels. Ha okay, has he just never read, read his, his journals? Old journals? My girlfriend asked the same. He's thing. a psych major. <laughs> He's probably had to do some kind of like analysis of, of his himself. own psyche. Yep. He's never fucking read his old journals. Not He's until had he's him this whole Kutcher. fucking time. Not until he's Ashton Kutcher. Apparently not. But Evan starts reading his his journal. It turns out by reading his journals, he's able to time travel back to whatever was happening when he was writing this journal so he travels back to the day that crockett that's the dog's name crockett got burned alive uh that's what that was actually my next note it took him until he was this old to read his journal and learn that he that can time travel so that's interesting but uh he comes back before crockett actually dies so he gets to see kind of like the same event but just a little bit more of it uh because he travels back to when he was blacked out. Guys, the blackouts were when his older self was in his younger self. Yep. Basically, the blackouts are when he time travels. Where I. <laughs> Fuck, I had something. But uh, yeah, Evan visits Lenny uh, as a full grown adult now, like in the present day. He gets back from time traveling and nothing's, nothing's changed. Uh, he goes to visit Lenny now, who is foggy, uh, and he's still building these model airplanes. Uh, so he goes in, he's asking him about what happened that day that Crockett got burned, and it turns out Lenny is crazy. 
because uh, he jacks him up against the wall and he's like, you knew something was going to happen or something like that. Uh, he, you know, basically blames Ashton Kutcher for all his problems. Uh, Evan starts writing in his journals again in present day and he time travels some more. Back to because right. of course. He travels back to right before the dynamite went off in that situation. He's, they're all smoking... Uh, well, he's smoking a cigarette. They're all in the woods watching uh, a mailbox. And apparently, you know, this is right before the firecracker incident happened. They put a stick of dynamite in the in the mailbox. And Evan's like, what are we doing? And uh, he accidentally drops a cigarette on his shirt. And it burns a hole through his shirt. And, and gives him a little scar. Like a burn mark. Uh, th- this... this <laughs> the owner of the mailbox, this woman, uh, uh, comes home... Uh, and she's carrying her newborn daughter with her, and she goes to check the mail. The mailbox explodes, presumably, obviously. This is so fucked up. <laughs> presumably killing the mother and the kid. Uh, but no, it, There's no fucking presumably well, about it. They are fucking dead. Well, I'm just saying because we cut back to present they day. They are fucking dead. We cut back to present day before we can see exactly what happened. But yeah, that's why I said presumably. Uh, but. Yeah, they fucking died. <laughs> that's he travels what back to present day, and Evan wakes up. Uh, and he throws up everywhere, but then he finds out he's got a new scar on his stomach where he dropped the cigarette when he time travels. Now he's realizing, dun, oh, dun, dun, dun. he's realizing, oh shit, I can travel back in time dun, 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 dun. And, and change the future. In a world where scars form, <laughs> Evan and That's his mom go to a fortune teller and surprise, uh, the fortune teller freaks out. He has no soul, Mally. Yo, this is also director Scott special. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he, he turns out he's got no soul because he's got no lifeline on his palm. Because, cool. Um, his mom mentions to him that before Evan was born, she had two stillbirths. Way to drop the ball and not tell me about that, mom. That's kind of something I would like to know. Whoa. That was creepy sounding. Uh, Sorry. Turns, uh, you know, Evan's like, well, what the fuck, mom? And she's like, well, I consider you my miracle baby. Yeah, which the whole stillbirth thing comes into play. In, in the, the director's, director's cut. cut. Like, this scene, I understand why this scene was only in the director's cut, because it makes no fucking sense otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's Thumper he's talking to here. I just wrote down this note. He says, you think you know me? I don't even know me. And I was like, that was probably the quote-unquote best line the screen ra- screenwriters wrote that day. They're like, dude, I got Wrote it. that got day, it. wrote the entire fucking movie. <laughs> They're like, that is what's going to sell our movie. You think you know me? I don't know me. Command, save, close laptop. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's the best it's getting for today. <sighs> Evan visits Kaylee uh, and turns out, of course, she's just a shitty waitress in a shitty diner. I mean, I feel like all this stuff is like beat for beat what you expect. Nothing in this movie is surprising to me. Um, he goes to see her. She He asks her about what happened that day, and uh, I don't know, it upsets Amy Smart. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention, she's Amy Smart now. Oh, uh, yeah. She's a shitty waitress in a shitty diner. He goes back to his dorm, and he finds out through an answering machine message left by Tommy that Kaylee killed herself because of something Evan said to her. Which, at first, I gotta ask, how did Tommy get his number? Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, he probably was listed. This would, There were phone books then. That's a good point. But he's in he a dorm. Know, like, a phone college? book was a collection of phone numbers and contact information. But it, he's a college dorm. I don't know if they would give that number out. I don't know. Uh, he mentions... He's writing in his journal and he says, If I can make scars, do I have the power to heal them? And I for sure know that was their best lie they wrote that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were like... He, he opened the laptop. We can Imagine write. if he wrote those scenes back to back. He's, he's like, like, guys, how was your weekend? <laughs> Fucking... Listen to this shit that I'm, I wrote. I'm taking a break for the next week. We're you know he just like leaned back, just gave the old knuckle crack. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Lit a cigarette. <laughs> um, Evan reads his journals and time travels again back to the pedo situation where he's in front of the camera with little young Kaylee. And he calls the dad, he calls Evan Eric Stoltz a fuck bag, <laughs> which I wrote down because nice. I've never heard that combination of words. You've never heard fuck bag? Nope. Not only that, but he uses it many times throughout this movie. And at one point, he's like, it's amazing that word doesn't have any weight to you. I'm like, probably because he doesn't know what the fuck it is. You got fuck bag, cunt cart. They're all good ones. Cunt cart? Yeah. Did you just make that up or yep. you just... Nope. <laughs> Completely made that right. up. 
Well, he chastises. I like it though. I'm he chastises that Eric that's Stoltz. That's my best line of the day. He chastises Eric Stoltz. Closing laptop. Uh, to try and save Kaylee. And the dad's like, "Cool, I won't touch her no more." And he time he goes back to present day, except he wakes up this time. Uh, he's not normal Ashton Kutcher psych major. He wakes up as King of the Frats with his queen Kaylee. So like they're kind of like the prom queen and king of the fraternities and the sororities at this college. Eric's got every uh, day is fratter day. <laughs> Evan's got all new friends, and like no one obviously knows that this is an alternate timeline except for Evan. Uh, turns out Thumper's now a dick to him because obviously the timelines change. They're not friends, and the professor doesn't know who he is because, oh. of course. Turns out instead of diddling Kaylee, though, Eric Stoltz decided to diddle Tommy. Fuck! And that's what resulted in this timeline because Tommy was apparently in prison and just got recently released. Shows up, trashes Evan's car, uh, and tries to beat Tommy for basically having a much better life than him, and not only that, fucking his sister. No, tries to Tommy tries to beat. Oh, Evan. I'm sorry, Tommy tries to beat Evan. Up. But then, but then Evan's like, you know what? You killed my dog, and Tommy's like, what? He goes, you you uh, fucked with with pretty much my whole life, and now you're trying to kill me, and so he kills Tommy. In, in quote unquote defense, well, that's a little excessive I mean, self-defense, you know, but yeah, kills him with a bat, and somehow he ends up in prison. Work. Uh, worst lawyer of all have, time. I was gonna say worst lawyer ever. Uh, and I gotta ask: Does every movie that has a prison scene have to have an Aryan Brotherhood? Because this is yeah, dude. Have you never been to prison? Yeah, but every move, not every prison has an Aryan Brotherhood. Not only that, not every movie needs. You don't know what it's like in the clink. All right. Uh, I've seen Oz. <laughs> Evan's mom delivers him uh, his journals. Well, some of the journals, uh, not the important ones. Basically, not parts where Evan can time travel back to. Uh, and the Aryan Brotherhood fucks up his journals, takes some of them so he can't read them. And then he gets raped, I think. Is this only the director's cut? Like, he's laying in bed. A guy comes, pulls him off the bed, and we just cut to the next scene. I'm assuming they're implying he got raped. Yeah. Uh, again... It's not American History X raping, though, because um, he uh, is walking fine the next day. I, I think the rape scene is only director's cut. Okay. Well, his prison mate, Carlos, uh, who, of course, is this super religious uh, Mexican fella, which, again, of course he is. Uh, basically, Evan's like, look, I need your help. I need to get my journals back. Uh, I'll show you something. And if, you know, if I'm wrong, you don't have to help me. If so, I could really use your help. Basically, he travels back in time to when he's a little kid, and he, you know, those things like that, uh, that uh, people place receipts on the little pokers. Yeah. He goes back in and he slams his hands down on him. Stigmata. And, and yep, time travels back to the present. Carlos is like, "Oh, holy <laughs> shit!" It's all oh, you know, El Diablo, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> Just all the kind of like cliche. Yeah, and fuck. he shows them. Evans got like these holes in his hands, obviously now where he uh, stabbed himself. Which gotta ask, this is where the movie's time traveling aspects don't make sense to me. What? This is the part. These are. This is one of the parts. So he time travels back to when he's a little kid, right? This is well before the Crockett situation, mm-hmm. before the Dynamite situation. He does that, right? He impales his hands. And then Tom travels right back to the present, and it's exactly the same, right? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't, how, how does he know that... Because the event that led to him being in prison was the whole fraternity thing. Does that mean that his past self also chastised the dad into being a pedo? Dude, and I Does that I also know. mean that he again stupidly killed Tommy with the bat in self-defense? I don't fuck it. I don't... I have Anyways, no idea. So he's like, All right, I need Why you to... Why would you do something that extreme? Yeah, you could do something very simple, like I don't know. Why both hands? Yeah, one hand. One, not not even. You don't have to get have to go all the way through. Like just fucking, you know, a scar. Yeah, I don't know. Jesus. Uh, basically, he's like, look, you're gonna help me get my journals back. Uh, so he's Evan's got a plan. He goes to the Aryan Brotherhood leader huh. and offers to a big suck one. his dick. dick. Uh. So basically, he does that, but he's only trying to fuck with him because as he gets down, because all good time travel movies hinge on dick, dick sucking. sucking. 
Uh, he basically he's doing this as a ploy. He gets them vulnerable and then just starts fucking shanking the shit out of this dude in his dick. Uh, yeah, pretty fucked up. Carlos runs in because now there's kind of like a Imagine prison. Imagine that directed by David Fincher. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's gonna fucking happen. It'd be great, man. Uh, Carlos runs in and basically slams the cell door shut that they're in and is trying to keep it closed from all the people trying to get in because, again, there's a big prison riot going on. Uh, Evan gets his journals back and time travels again. Back. Wait, when did the prison riot start? It starts as he's shanking the fucking because all the uh, all the other Aryans are coming to oh. protect him, and that's why Carlos is keeping the cell door closed. He manages to time travel just in the nick of time back to uh, right before Crockett was killed, and it's Lenny, Tommy, uh, Lenny, Evan, and Kaylee walking through the woods, and Evan's like, "We need something to cut the rope," and they're all like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" He gives Lenny this, like, shard, and is like, you know, when we get there, cut the rope. And Lenny's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But they get there, and yeah, Tommy's shoving Ev- uh, Evan's dog, Crockett, into the sack, point lighter fluid over, same thing. Uh, he's trying, And then, as Tommy's like, listen, Evan, listen to me good, and this is why I'm killing your dog, Evan goes on this heartfelt speech. You know, I never, I know you wouldn't let your dad hurt you and your sister. If you want, I'll move away. I'll never fuck with her again. Whatever, he says. And Tommy's like, okay. And he puts the the lighter, the two by four that's on fire down to not kill the dog. And then Lenny decides, he's just like, nah, I'm just going to stab Tommy in the back and yeah, kill like him. like everything was good. Mm-hmm. Lenny goes in for the kill. Yep. And Emma's like, no. <laughs> oh my God, don't do it, no. But this is like, this is what I just had to know. I was like, there are so many chances for Evan to not fuck shit up and he just doesn't do it. Like, if this is the case... Time travel back to the same exact spot again. Don't give him the shard. Go in and have the normal conversation you were just having. Uh, you know, and that way Tommy doesn't kill him. The worst thing that happens here, obviously, though, is uh, because Evan ducked out of the way for the 2 by 4 it hit Kaylee. Now she's got a huge, pretty much Chelsea smile on one side yeah. of her face. Her whole side of her cheek is just gone. Um. But yeah, just time travel back to this spot. Don't let Kaylee get hit. Give your heartfelt speech. Everyone is fine then. Anyways, uh, he, tra- he basically, because of this, it puts him back into a present day alternative timeline. And now Evan's back in college. But turns out Thumper, who is apparently cool with Evan again, uh, finds Evan having a seizure on the floor. Like, mm-hmm. violent. Every time he time travels, pretty much, he has like this seizure, blood, yeah. nose bleed. Because it's cool, man. Uh, Evan goes to the doctor with his mom, and apparently he's got forty years worth of memories stored into his twenty-year-old yeah, something brain. Yeah, because he retains the memories from each time each time line. travel. So basically, his brain is like. I gotta say, that's actually kind of one thing I actually kind of like about this movie. It is pretty. It's is a that cool. Like, there's repercussions for every time he time travels. I actually kind of dig that. It is a cool aspect. It reminds me of the fucking whole... Lost. Holy shit! It is a cool when aspect. When did Lost start? Uh, two thousand four. Three, I don't know. Did Lost rip off that idea um, from this movie? Well, apparently Lenny is in Yo, the same Lost hospital. Lost came out in 2004, so that means the time travel shit was about season... Four? Four, five-ish. It was four when uh, Jamie Davies and all them show up. Yeah, but was season five the one where the island was jumping to... Spoilers. Was jumping yeah. through, and they yeah. called having those nosebleeds. Oh my god, Lost rip off the butterfly effect. <laughs> Well, apparently Lenny is also in the same hospital. And you got to give me a minute to fucking <laughs> Jesus. Lenny's in this hospital because, of course, he killed Tommy and they strapped him. Oh, my God. Table. Kevin Durant's in this movie, too. <laughs> Your mind is exploding over there. This is a great movie for you. Uh, but yeah, Lenny's strapped to this table like a goddamn robot. Uh, Evan goes in to talk to him and Evan's like, uh, you know, Lenny's like, you knew what was going to happen when we went into that junkyard, right? Where... You know, Tommy was going to kill Crockett. He goes, yeah. He goes, and then he says, well, then you should be here instead of me. Like, strapped to this table. And he's 100% right. Like, Lenny gets the short end of the stick in almost all these time travel aspects. So, Evan's like, fuck it. I'm going to time travel back to when I first meet my dad. Um, And they're having their conversation again. And, uh, you know, Evan's trying to explain to his dad. Apparently, this is what happened in between the blackout Evan had. Because, again, when he time travels, that's when the blackouts are. So he time travels back to when he meets his dad and he's telling his dad, look, I don't have a short amount of time. I need you to tell me how to fix all this. And 
Evan's dad's like, you can't, son. You have to You have to die to make it work. It's got to end with you. You got to be the last one in our bloodline that can do this. And that's why Evan's dad was trying to choke him out. Uh, so <sighs> Evan's somehow snaps back to reality. Uh, you're not going to take that? The low-hanging fruit? Th- okay. Evan travels again and finds Kaylee living... Dude, I'm still fucking <laughs> thinking about Lost... Uh, he, he basically after being choked out by his dad, he travels back to the present and he goes to find Kaylee. Who's oh God now, damn it! You wanted me to sing Eight Mile, didn't you? Yeah, Son of a living bitch. as a junkie slut. Uh, he tells her basically. Wait, what happened in the past that turned her into a junkie? Well, we don't know because we cut from Evan talking with his dad and nothing bad happening to Kaylee. To now, all of a sudden, in the present day, she's a junkie slut. Uh, and I say uh, yeah. that because the first thing she says upon seeing Evan after 20 something years is, oh, I thought you were someone else. Make it quick. I got a customer coming or something like that. <laughs> um, he tells her, you used to be she happy. For the money. <laughs> he tells her, you used to be happy once with me. He tells her about all his time traveling. And she's like, well, fuck you. My life sucks. You sound like you're having a great time jumping around in time. Why don't you go back and fix shit with me? Because I'm a junkie slut, and it's not great. It's not fun. That's not the exact quote. No, but it's, <laughs> it's I'm paraphrasing. So, Evan, time travels again. Gotta get back in time. Back to the dynamite situation. This is where shit just gets ridiculous to me. <laughs> Dude, pick a situation. And fix that one. So he travels back to the dynamite situation. He tries to rescue the lady by running up to the mailbox tunnel to get back, but it blows up and he wakes up in present day. Now he's With no fucking arms. He's a double amputee. Not only that, his roommate instead of Thumper at college is now Lenny, who looks like he's straight out of the 70s, dude. Hippie status. And he and is he's also banging Kaylee. Like <laughs> in the just same straight room. pile driving her. Mm hmm. So, apparently, this is a good question, because I never realized this until my until yeah. someone pointed out. So, he's a double amputee. He's missing his arms, but why is he in a wheelchair? <laughs> People with without arms could still walk. I, I don't know. Is it just to make the situation sadder? I guess. <laughs> well, turns out now Tommy is a Jesus freak. Uh, after all, the whole thing with, that happened, apparently... Tommy rushed in and pushed the mother and her daughter out of the way to protect them, quote unquote, from the firecracker that he put in there. And he said, "Oh, when and Amy Smart's like, oh, when that happened, Tommy turned his whole life around because he was a hero." And Evan's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? That kid is a psycho." Um, but yeah, he's a total Jesus freak now. And my next note is just granola bars equal sadness. Well, that's true because because again he's, he's double he's a double amputee and he's got like these prosthetic arms that are really shitty mm-hmm. and like uh, archaic. And she tries to give him a granola bar and he just crushes it. In his hand. I laughed. I'm sorry. It was just ridiculous. It's trying too hard to make me feel for this character. So Evan realizes this sucks. So he attempts drowning himself, but Tommy saves him. Uh, even more sadness though, Evan's, uh, you know, Evan tries to drown himself self, and Tommy saves him and Tommy's like, you know what you need? You need to go see her mom who's dying of cancer. <laughs> this is what you need to feel better. So Evan's mom is dying of cancer because of all the cigarettes she smoked. Turns out without arms, Evan was never able to write in his journal after the dynamite scenario. So there's no journals. Um... And I don't know how he does this. I think... Oh, yeah, that's right. He had just the journals he had uh, up until the accident. Mm-hmm. So he can only time travel back to the pedo situation again. And again with the fuck bag. He calls this dude a fuck bag again. Oh, uh, whatever. And he goes straight to the dynamite and he lights it up. And he's like, look, if you don't promise not to fuck with your daughter and to discipline your son, I'm going to blow shit up. But uh, he accidentally drops it and Kaylee picks it up and it apparently blows the fuck up out of her. So now Evan's the one in the insane asylum. What a twist! Everybody's in the insane asylum at some point because everyone in this movie is crazy. Uh, Mally, are you, are you okay over there? You, you just like zoned out. Where out. are we at in this? We're at the part where we're back to the beginning oh, of the yeah, film. He blows up Kaylee. Uh, even more twist. Apparently, there never were any journals. What? What? Fuck. Ah. 
Uh, the doctor's like, you know, your dad used to talk about the same thing about a photo album, but there was never any photos. Now you're talking about journals. And there's never been any journals. And Evan re- re- remembered that from that box, that I guess that you only see in the director's cut, mm-hmm. uh, all those photos, that's how his dad was able to time travel. He didn't use journals. He uses photos. And so he's like, there's a split diopter shot, which is just hilarious to me, the way they play it out, because it just looks so ridiculous. But Evan's asking his mom, could you bring me the photos that... Uh, dad used to have or no the home movies i'm sorry the home yeah. movies of when he was a kid Which, so without that director's cut this whole scene doesn't that make sense. scene at the beginning th- like he just off screen randomly comes up with this idea yeah well basically he's asking for the home movies that his dad shot while evan's mom was pregnant with him and his plan which isn't very immediately apparent is just crazy banana stupid but he's like I'm going to watch these home movies and try and time travel that way like my dad did. And he goes back... Mally, this is the end of the movie. He goes back in time. Not to when he was a kid. No, no, no. Back into... When he was a fuck, my fucking fetus. He, was, he time travels back into his mother's womb while she's in labor. And decides the only way to fix this shit, to fix all the timelines, because apparently he can't save everyone, is to kill himself by using the umbilical cord to choke himself to death. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing, but this no, whole concept... No, you should, because that's fucking hilarious. This whole concept is so goddamn funny to me. It's so stupid. But yeah, we get... I have to say, I kind of like the animation of the baby in the womb. If Choking it's, its goddamn well, self? It reminds me of kind of like the Star Child from 2001. Yeah. It's the same kind of like baby fetus look. But yeah, he killed. He chokes himself out with the umbilical cord, and his mother, you know, she's in pain. She's screaming, you know, not again, not again. Turns out this is what happened with the other two babies that her stillbirths. This is this explains the deleted scene and the whole situation. Apparently, every time Evan's mom tries to give birth, the the fetus inside her has a full life. Time travels back to this moment, and decides he's the only way to save everyone is to kill himself. So this has happened numerous times. And she's just not destined to have a kid. And so we How get to see How fucked is God. I feel like this the uh, some of the ideas in this movie are really good and really cool and creative, but horrible execution. Horrible, like way too trying to be edgy execution. Like I think a Fincher, like you said, or a Kubrick or a Nolan could do this movie and make it fucking. Let amazing. all three of them do it. Which one gets which one get Kubrick's dead? Fuck. Yep. Maybe he just time traveled back in. No, Denny Villeneuve. Never mind. Let Denny Villeneuve do this. Oh, and it would be fuck. perfect. Also, you take out some of the different scenarios. Like, we don't need the amputee one, I don't think. Nah. Keep the amputee? Need the amputee one. Well, we get, like, a brief glimpse, like a montage. Of- That's the only scenario where Lenny's doing okay. <laughs> so I kind of want that. That's a necessity for um, me. Lenny's the fucking hero of the story. Well, we get this like brief montage of what everyone's life is like. Since He's the only one Evan, that goes through anything. Since Evan was never born. Evan's a dick at the beginning. He's a <laughs> dick at the end. Since Evan was never born, we get to see this glimpse of what everyone's life was like. Uh, they are much happier. Every Everyone. Lenny, uh, Evan's mom decides she's going to adopt, and she gets a new husband, so she can still have her kid and has a happy life. She doesn't get resort to smoking, uh, smoking and getting cancer. Uh, Kaylee and Lenny go to stay. Uh, Kenny, Kaylee and Tommy go to stay with their mom instead of their dad, so he doesn't have the chance to diddle them. Uh, Lenny, I don't know exactly what happened with Lenny. Lenny just doesn't turn crazy. I don't think. Yeah, Lenny's just fine. He's just a normal dude. And then Amy Smart gets married to some dude on the beach, and that's it. We just dissolved a black in the movie. Evan was never born, so nothing bad ever happened. <laughs> and that's the butterfly effect. Director's cut. Fuck. Yeah. We went through that whole movie so, trying to explain it, and let's, it's still tough. Okay, let's talk about the endings. Because there's five, mm-hmm. four, five, how many? Four. I know the theatrical one with the the meeting each other on the street. I know this one. What are the other ones? Do you know? Do you have them pulled up in front of you? Uh, Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got them right here. Uh... Do you want to go through them or should I? They're all basically the same fucking thing. Oh, there's one. Well, basically the first ending, the theatrical ending, uh, Evan turns around uh, and 
talks to, and they and talks to Kaylee. And the second one, which I that's think that's the theatrical. Is that the, I think the set the th- I think the second is the theatrical. The theatrical, they kind of look at one another before the other one can see them, but they don't talk. Uh, yeah. Okay. The theatrical, they walk by. She kind of looks at him. It's all pretty and much and then the same. turns around. And then as she turns, after she turns around, he looks back at her. Mm-hmm. And then they just go on their separate ways. Yeah, it's all pretty much the in, same. In one of them, he turns around and then follows her. Um, in another one, they talk for a second. And then in the director's cut one, he kills himself as a fucking baby in the womb. Way better ending to me. Um... <laughs> So this was apparently one of the most widely read, unproduced scripts in the industry. I wonder at why. The time. It's like I said, this movie has potential. It's just the execution is terrible. Uh, it wasn't until Ashton Kutcher signed on as an EP that the movie got greenlit because you know of his huge stardom at the time. Uh, like we mentioned, Evan's mother uh, made mention of having previous stillbursts. Uh, it doesn't necessarily just set up the stage for the alternate ending that we get the director's cut it's a pattern of some sort Mm -hmm. uh it also apparently adds a little bit of intrigue to uh the natural events of uh evan his his siblings obviously there's other movies out there is what i'm explaining Mm with which i gotta say this movie's got like three sequels that ashton kutcher's not in have you seen any of them Uh, butterfly effect 2 butterfly effect 3 are they about Um, that or just other people that have Uh, the second one is not related at all. It uses the same time travel mechanics. There's a mention, like you see uh, Evan's dad's name on like a newspaper on point. Other than that, not related except the time travel method is the same. Be, this could be Butterfly a Effect 3, nothing to do with the first two. The method of time travel, completely different. See, this could be, a, if like the way they set up this first one, at least in the script, I'm not saying the actual movie, this could be a good trilogy. You could do like... A father, a son, or a, and a grandson all together, like their t- different time traveling kind of thing. I mean, you could, but I don't think that's necessary. It's not necessary, but I'm saying you could. You could have a series here. Let's talk about my favorite piece of trivia. What was the name of the <laughs> character of Evan originally in the script? Chris Treborn. That's T R E. When you shift that T over, is Christ reborn? God damn it! Give me a fucking break. That's a student film. A student filmmaker's uh, his in, that's his input into a script more than anything I've ever seen in my life. But apparently they changed his name to Evan, which is still is kind of a play on the words "event reborn" to simulate his time traveling. Like that is the most "go fuck yourself" kind of note you could possibly have. Uh, I think in a script like this, it's try it's just trying way too hard, man. Uh, would you recommend this movie? People who have never seen it. Yeah. I think it's got <laughs> some promise, and there are really un- unintentionally funny parts to me. Uh, kind of like yeah, The Wicker I Man. Know, I don't think this movie's supposed to be funny. It's not. So that unintentionally, it's got some hilarious parts to it. Uh, yeah, that is The Butterfly Effect. Do you want to give your silver lining for... Lenny's finally not crazy! <laughs> okay. Woo! I gotta say, that goes in line with mine. Uh... Which is the obvious one with this director's cut ending. Uh, everyone's lives are obviously way better without Evan. Yeah. Evan. It's like, you remember when I was a kid, you were like, I ne- wish I was never been born. And then they would do like, like oh, like the TV shows that did that, like the mm-hmm. kids cartoons. And then they showed you, oh, look, everyone's lives would be way different without yours. In this situation, yeah, you, everyone's lives would be better. Dude, if I'd never been born, you'd be sitting in this room with some other asshole. <laughs> or I'd be goth and a double amputee. <laughs> 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 um so yeah that's that's uh the butterfly effect uh so this movie if you're watching director's cut might be unintentionally funny but we're looking at the grand scheme of things it doesn't necessarily end on a quote-unquote happy note for evan Trayborn. uh mally what's a movie people can watch after bill and ted's bogus journey another time travel movie is that why you picked it yeah nice that's a good one um uh, it's, it's a great you're not gonna go with excellent adventure no, I, I don't know. Dude, I love Bogus Journey. All right. I love death. <laughs> I'm going to go not with... Like, I'm not like a serial killer. <laughs> I'm going to go with another movie that I think Amy Smart is great in. Uh, and super down... Like, I think she's got an underrated performance in this movie. And this movie is so much fun. I watch it at least like four or five times a year. I love this movie. I'm going to go with uh, Crank. 
which I think is from 2005, not long after this movie. <laughs> or 2006. <laughs> that movie is so much fucking fun. Holy shit. And I think you'll definitely like enjoy seeing Amy Smart back 2006. to 2006. I was, I was close. 2005, 2006. Uh, so yeah, that's our episode this week. Thank you for listening, everyone. Please subscribe to us on iTunes. Thank you for listening. Leave us some feedback and a rating if you would. We'd greatly appreciate it. You can hop on over to facebook.com slash silverliningsplaylist. Give us a like and a possible suggestion for a future episode. Uh, we'll take into consideration when we do season two because next week is our season one finale. Oh, that makes me sad. Yeah, it makes me sad too. 26 episodes. It's like almost, uh... A network cable prime time. Dude, that's over most. Time. Yeah, most of those were at about twenty three episodes. Twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, so we're we're gonna cap Take it that off. Networks. We're gonna cap it off on twenty six for season one. So next week is our season finale. Dun 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 dun. Mally, do you have a clue for what we're gonna for end the finale our first season with? For the finale, we are going from Cadillacs to Porsches. Nice, total upgrade. Yeah. All right, do with that what you will. Uh, we will see you next week for our season one finale. Uh, I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally. And More. as always, Excelsior. Excelsior.